need that in order to create your third and final version of your website. CakePHP is the MVC pattern implementation in PHP. It's a framework. That means it's a whole bunch of libraries, open source code libraries, written in PHP that you can actually go ahead and look at that you can use in order to rapidly create a web application. All right. To get to that point, we not only have to download and install Cake PHP, we also have to do a few changes to our database because the ba database has to be compliant with KPHP. The database has to be what is typically called um, compliant with, conven with MVC pattern conventions. And you guys can watch on kphp.org and on the video lecture about it, you can watch the clean MVC conventions. And what are those conventions? Okay. So you can actually um, understand what exactly are those conventions that KPHP rely on in order to make it uh, easier to configure. The more conventions you have, the less configuration you will have to do. The less conventions you have, the more configuration you're going to have to do. So KPHP is all about conventions. And as long as you follow those conventions, then everything will fall through and you will not have to configure pretty much anything. <coughs> so from the database perspective, what are the changes? I'm going to show you my final Timex, my final PHP version of my Timex database. It's going to be on the left hand side and I'm going to compare it to the final version of my Cake PHP database and that's going to be on the right hand side. Okay. First thing that I did was I renamed the database. And please, please do this. Because in the final project, you guys are going to turn in two projects. One is the full PHP website and the other one is going to be the full KPHP one. And I don't want them both to be going against the same database. So make sure that yours is called Timex. Then the cake PHP is going to be called Timex underscore cake PHP. Got it? First change. Second change. All tables must be plural. Cake PHP has intelligence. English intelligence in the sense that it knows from a noun what is its plural and what is its singular. From a noun it knows also how to combine it with the I mean I'm sorry, for the verbs it also knows how to combine them with the nouns. So it's it's very smart and it's gonna try to figure out from the English perspective department I know the plurals are departments. Employee, I know the plurals are going to be employees. Payment, payments. Okay, those are the changes that you're going to have to do. Timesheet, timesheets. And that's about it. So far, so good? Now, every single table must have a key. 
and guess what the name of the key is lowercase i lowercase d that's it id so if you had a department code or employee code or whatever like I did in the departments table eh, no longer character two character code now it's going to be ID and it's going to be an integer it's going to be an automatically auto incremented key okay if that's the case then most probably you're going to have to also redo some of your keys some of your data in your table like for instance I had a department code as the key to my department and I had AC for accounting and CS for computer support I'm sorry customer support and HR for human resource etc now that I have an, a key called ID then ID 1 is accounting ID 2 is customer support etc etc yes the ID key has to be in what does that do to my foreign keys obviously they get affected as well so if you guys go into my timesheets remember timesheets are um, created against a department they're going to be built against a department right so before I had department code now I have department underscore ID department is the name of a table singular where it comes from underscore ID that's telling KPHP oh since I have the ID in there and it's not a primary key that means I have to go to the whatever is behind the underscore table in plural and find the key there and it needs to know that because all the website that you guys have been working on will be automatically generated by KPHP okay all the cruds and in fact it's going to generate a lot more than what you guys are going to require because it's going to generate the cruds for timesheets it's going to generate the cruds for employees it's going to generate the cruds for departments it's going to generate the cruds for payments stuff that I never created in my regular PHP website but I'm going to have available and all I have to do is modify it so if that's the case what's going to happen if it creates if it automatically generates the cruds for my employees do I do a create of an employee yes registration is a create of an employee so the create of my employee will be my registration do I do a create of a timesheet yes it's my enter hours equivalent where I go in after I log in I can actually create a brand new timesheet so even though you name them differently in your in your regular PHP eventually each one of your functional requirements is going to be either a create a read an update or a delete of any one of those entities okay and remember each one of these entities is going to be called the model it's going to be it's going to be named the model in this pattern okay so when I say the employee model that's going to be the entity representing an employee if I say timesheet model that means it's the entity representing all the timesheets okay that's part of the MVC pattern if you guys haven't watched it please watch the video lecture and that will make more sense so that's about it so now my foreign key in timesheets is called department underscore ID and you have to do the same thing for all for absolutely all the foreign keys 
So before under employee, my manager ID, I call it manager ID, right? Now I have to call it employee underscore ID. Why? Because it's a foreign key unto itself. See that? ID, oh, it's a key, but it has a prefix. Oh, it's employee. That means it's a foreign key. To what table? To employees. That's the one field that tells me who is my manager. In fact, what is the ID of my manager? Okay? <coughs> what else? This employee ID was my social security number. Now I change it to username. Just to make things so they're not confusing, in other words. Right? Because I, I log in with my username, and my username is the social security number. I used to call it the employee ID. What else? That's about it. So the rest of the stuff, you know, the foreign keys, names and stuff like that automatically will change when you change the names of the of the foreign keys. ID must be lowercase ID, yes. So <coughs> just to give you an idea, for instance, under timesheets, I had employee ID, employee capital I, lowercase d, as the name of the field that was the owner of that timesheet. Well, that's not cake PHP compliant. Cake, cake PHP compliant says you got to name the name of the table, employee, singular, underscore, lowercase id. That indicates that that's a foreign key to the employee table. Yes. That's a good question. The question is, under the foreign keys, you have on delete cascade, on update cascade. I would recommend you do leave it that way because when you delete a timesheet, I'm sorry, when you delete an employee, on the delete of that employee, it will delete all the timesheets. So it will cascade all the way down to the relationships of foreign keys and keys. MVC pattern will not do it automatically for you, which means that you might end up with a database that is not integral. There's no referential integrity, right? Why would you want to do it manually? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Stefan saying, well, in Facebook, if you delete your account, your comments are still available, whatever you post them. The reason is because the delete of your account in Facebook is not a real delete. It's just a deactivation of the account. So you inactivate your account. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is different than deleting it. The user thinks that it's deleting the account. In essence, what it's doing is just inactivating it. Not making it available for anybody. So from the user's perspective, the account doesn't exist. It's being deleted. But you got to keep the comments that that person made a long time ago. So the referential integrity is still there, and the account is not deleted. It's just inactivated. OK? So those are the changes that we got to do uh, as far as the database is concerned. Now,
I'm going to show you guys my cake PHP Timex project. Okay. So this becomes my cake PHP project. Notice that I have a whole bunch of folders in there that I didn't used to have. I have a controller folder, I have a model folder, I have a view folder there lies your MVC pattern. I also have a configuration folder, a console folder, library which I don't have anything under that, locale which makes it international, you can actually create your website in several languages, plugins you can actually put in your project code that somebody else created and they're called cake PHP plugins that do specific functionality. You can put your tests so now at this point you can actually test your code. So you create code under test that tests your code, your production code. Temporary file to work with. Vendor you can actually put in here different pieces of code that you're going to be able to share among different projects and webroot. Webroot is where you are going to put all your JavaScript, cascading style sheets, files that you upload, images, etc, etc. Okay? And the index homepage lives there. Okay? the index lives there and if you look at it it's like whoa is this are you serious this is the index I don't see anything in there I'm opening an eclipse eclipse knows how to show PHP code, right? Cake PHP is PHP code. No. So now what I'm going to do is actually before I show you the Cake PHP running, I'm going to show you the Cake PHP that I downloaded. In the video lecture that I shared with you guys, they had 2.2 version. Today, they have 2.4 version. You can download that version. Okay? Cake PHP 2.4.2. When you download it and zip it in your workspace, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get app, library, plugins, vendors, and a few, you know documentation files. Under app it's where you will put your application. Actually the APP should be changed to Timex or whatever you want to, you know, your project. And notice that that app has the same structure that I just showed you in my Timex. Config, console, controller, library, locale, model, everything right? So that's your empty app. It comes as part of KPHP. You can delete it if you want. 
then library this is the actual KPHP open source framework they call it cake right and the full name is KPHP because it's built in PHP this is it all these folders is the actual open source code that makes KPHP so if you go into for instance model folder you will see that there is a concept of what a model is in fact if you open it up you will see that it's a PHP file with PHP code but it has a whole bunch of classes right and in fact it has so many classes that the classes have been divided into several apps themselves and this is how you include them app uses so and so app uses so and so all this stuff comes from cake PHP and introduces the object oriented way of developing so for those of you who have not seen this in C or in Java, this is how you declare a class in PHP. What is a class? Exactly. It's an encapsulation of data, attributes, and behavior all in one file. So the model PHP file contains the model class, okay? And it inherits from other classes and implements different interfaces, what is called interfaces in PHP and Java as well, okay? So it has attributes that may be public or private these are all variables what is the dollar sign it's no different it has protected ones which means they will be public only to the classes that in inherit from the same class and it also has or should have functions look at this 500 600 lines of code and we're still into the attributes of what a model is there you go first function it's a public function it's called the underscore underscore construct this is the the constructor of the class so whenever you say underscore underscore construct means this is the function that will get executed when somebody creates a new instance of this model class so here comes all the code right and you pass three parameters with a default in case you do not pass any values. I'm sorry? Yeah, what about it? I don't know. Data source connection name? That's a really cool thing about it too. They have very good documentation. They comment as much as they can because some people contribute to the framework. So they need to understand as much as possible how the framework works. Okay? 
So everything under underscore underscore construct is the constructor. Then it comes the different functions relevant to a model. So for instance, there's a public function called implemented events. And all it's going to do is going to return an array. An array of what? Of associations. This is associated to this array. This is associated to this array. Okay? And you're going to see that associations and arrays are the most powerful data structures in PHP. Because it allows us to do really cool stuff. So you can have implemented events. You can have get event manager. You can have a call. Handles custom method calls like find by for database models. Is set. Handles the lazy loading of model associations. So basically the model, the model is going to be the PHP class that you're going to use in Cake PHP so that your entities will get created, read, update, and delete automatically without you doing nothing. No SQL statements, nothing against the database. That's pretty powerful. Yes. And after all, it's a 3700 line of code. 3712 lines of code class. Okay? So it's very extensive. Before validate, after validate, it has a clear cache. It handles cache as well before find, after find. It handles the finding of your records in the database. It handles the join in case your mo your entity has a relationship with another entity in the database. It handles all that stuff. So, given that, The first thing that we're going to analyze in our timings is going to be the models. What do you guys think are going to be my models? Yes, my main entities. All the, the entities that I have been dealing with all along. In fact, you guys will see that for every table that I have in the database, there's going to be a one-to-one -one match to a model in my KPHP. So I'm going to have the concept of an employee. This is my employee. And my employee is going to be a class that inherits from the app model. And the app model is going to be a class in the cake PHP that inherits from the model PHP, which is the one that we just saw. And then what do I do? I'm going to create validation rules. Validation rules as in what's mandatory and what is not. So remember all the, val the JavaScript validation that we did in our website? Every time that we change a value or we did an unclick on the submit, we will have to go in with JavaScript, take a look at what's there, what was mandatory and what, n what n was not inserted. That's all done in here. You're going to say, hey, I have a name, and the rule is not empty. And an email, and an employee type and an employee ID, and a username, and a password. So pretty much every single one of the fields in the database are going to be properties validated in the class. 
Look at this. I'm able to declare associations. What is my what is the employer associated to? Yes, to itself, right? So you're going to say I'm going to call manager the following and you put an array. You associate manager to an array. What's going to be that array? It's going to be a class name. What class? Employee. It's going to have a foreign key. What's the name of the foreign key? Employee ID. You can even have conditions, fields, order if you want your managers in a certain order. All that stuff. How about the has many associations? So this one is uh, belongs to. That's a one-to-one -one association, right? How about the has many associations? What does an employee has many of? Timesheets. So you're going to say timesheet. Guess what? Timesheet is going to be an attribute of the employee class. So what is it? What is the association to timesheet? Well, the class associated to it is going to be timesheet. So you know I'm going to have another class called timesheet. It's a model. Right? Its foreign key is employee ID. Is it dependent? No, it's not. What are the conditions? You can have conditions if you want, or fields, or order, or limit. You can have a limit, an offset, an exclusive. All that stuff. And then, what do we have as the only function in the employee? The before save. What is the before save? This is what gets executed before we actually save the employee in the database. Can anybody try to figure out more or less what's going on there? Something about a password, right? Welcome to the object oriented convention in PHP. When you s indicate arrow, that is a dash greater than sign, that means that this is the class on the left hand side of the arrow, and on the right hand side is either an attribute or a function of that class. This is an association. This is exactly what you get when you ask for query. Re remember fetch query rows? What do you get? You get an array of name of the field, value. Name of the field, value. That's what an association is. Name of the field, value. So we're going to go through each one of those examples, but notice that the amount of code that I have to build is not much. So who's actually doing the CRUDs, the create, the read, the updates, everything? It's automatically done by the framework. Now, all this code that you guys are looking at will be automatically generated by KPHP from your database. And the better you create your database cake PHP compliant, the better your code will be. In other words, you will have to fuss less with your code if your database is, is well formed and, and done correctly. Same thing with timesheet. Timesheet is going to be another one which has validation rules, which has associations to other models, has a one to one association, and has also has many associations. 
and he has something called is owned by. Okay? So, <clears throat> that's as far as the models, right? Which is going to be a one-to-one -one from your database tables to your entities. What about the controllers? What do you think are going to be the controllers? Why do we need a controller? Okay, suppose you have this system that knows everything about how to read, create, and update employees. And knows all the cruds about timesheets. What else do you need? Why, what, why do you need controllers for? To make it implement a real service, a real function. Tell me a function that we are implementing in our website. Registration. Or timesheet list. Right? Or approve timesheets. Or enter hours, which is creation of a... So those are going to be the controllers. Okay? The controllers will know everything that they need to know about timesheets. So, for instance, they're going to be able to list all my timesheets. And you guys are going to see that this is a convention in KPHP. That the index function of the controller class is going to be the one that lists them all. Okay? You're going to have one function called the view. This one will allow you to view one and only one timesheet. Right? That's why you pass the ID of the timesheet as a parameter. What else? It's going to allow you to add timesheets. Yes, you bet they are automatically created. Why wouldn't it? Goes to the database, sees this table called timesheets with all these fields. Says, okay, I'm going to create an entity in the model that is a one to one to it. And then to be able to provide services against this entity, I'm going to create a controller. A controller that will do the create, the read, the updates, and the deletes of those entities. And he will do it for you. So this is the list of all, and this is the list of one. This is the creation of one. This is the update of one. This is the delete of one. And there's also something called the is authorized which we're going to see what that means. This is basically telling us whether the user is authorized to look at it, any of these timesheets. Like adding, viewing, and all that stuff, right? Yes? Right. That's a very good question. How do you handle authentication and stuff? Well, if you think about it, those are concerns that should be isolated from the actual system. And indeed, that's what they do. They isolate the authentication from the rest of the system. And we're going to see how that's done. What about employees? Do you do you authenticate a timesheet? Do you authenticate a, a department? No, you authenticate an employee. So, employee controller will have the create, the read, the updates, and the deletes of employees. But guess what? You will also have the concern of the login. 
So you create a function. This is a function that is not automatically generated. This is a function that you will have to create yourself. It's a login. And what does it do? It uses the KPHP class authentication. That's it. Okay. It also has the logout. Notice that our KPHP has the concept, the class concept of a session. It's not as loose as it was before. There was just a variable. Now it's a class that handles a whole bunch of stuff. He knows how to write the session. He knows how to destroy the session. It's it's an entity in charge of doing that stuff. That's what the object oriented mentality does. It breaks all the possible services and concerns and assigns them to the right entities responsible to fulfill them. Okay? So, same as the timesheets, we're going to have the employee list, the employee create, the employee view, the employee edit or update, the employee delete. That's all stuff automatically generated by KPHP and who is authorized. Also, there, we're going to have those users that do not accept cookies, so we're going to be able to provide the get user from those as well, which is a functionality that we didn't create in the, P in the PHP one. And we're going to have what it's called the app controller. The app controller is going to be the main controller that says, okay, I know exactly who is going to be playing an important part in this system. Okay? And each each part, they call it a component. So the in the app controller, you declare all your components. What do you think are going to be all of my components? Definitely the session, right? I need to be able to track sessions for users. And I'm also going to be able to do authentication. Right? Now, when I authenticate, where am I going to go? To the employee. Exactly. The user model for the authentication is going to be the employee. What about the login redirect? So when somebody tries to get a list, that's the action, of all the timesheets, that's the controller, what are you going to do? If they're not authenticated, they're going to call it login redirect. Right? So after login, you're going to redirect them to timesheet list. This is basically what you're saying. Notice that it's almost like plain English. Isn't it? After logging, you're going to redirect. Where are you going to redirect? To the following controller, timesheets. Okay. Specifically, what function in the controller? The action is index. That is list of timesheets. What I'm saying in plain English here is after logging I should be taking to timesheet list. Are we? What about after logout? Where should I be redirected after logout? To the logging page. Who is in charge of logging? the employee's controller. Specifically, what function? The logging function. Also called the action. So you gotta start getting familiar with all these terms. There's a controller. Controller has actions. 
Yes, I built this one. These are programmatically rules of my system. These are not automatically generated. The website that gets automatically generated, anybody can go in there and create employees, create timesheets, delete employees, delete timesheets, because that's all it is. It's the CRUDs for entities. And it will do it for you. So you have to add those extra rules. You have to add that extra code that makes your website behave like the PHP website that you built. So where should I be redirector after logging? Who is in charge of authenticating? Where should I be redirector after logout? Who does the logging? The actual login action. And these, you can call it Peter Paul, whatever you want to call it. These are the names of paths that you will send your users when they are on your website. This is the name and this is the definition of the path. That's the components part of your app controller. This one or this one? Login. Yeah, login redirect is where you're going to be taken after login, after successfully no, logging. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, so you have to declare it because otherwise everybody will be able to do the crutch on any entity. So, we have the concept of the timesheet. We have all the associations of timesheets with the other m entities. We have the concept of a timesheet controller that knows how to provide a list of them. Let's dig a little bit deeper into it. What does this mean? The current class, right? So the current class, which is time scene controller, has a property, has a property called timesheet. How do we know? Well, timesheet controller... Exactly. So it knows what a timesheet is all about, right? And it has something called a recursive, okay, which is the number of associations to recurse through the during find calls when you're trying to do a find. So at this point, you're going to say recursive? No none. Then you're going to do a pagination. So remember, you're building a list of timesheets, right? So you're going to have to provide some kind of pagination. Did we ever provide a pagination in the list of whatever we did in PHP? No, because it was complex. In fact, so someone asked me, what if it's a million timesheets? Are you going to display all million timesheets in the timesheet list? And there were several ways that we could implement it, right? We could say, no, no, no. We can tell the query to just give me the top 10. And that's what we're going to display. Or the other solution was, yes, we're going to ask the database to bring me all million of them. But on the front end, I'm going to tell JavaScript to only display the top the first 10 and provide me a next and he will provide the next 10 and all. we never implemented that code because whether you do it on the front end or on the back end it's complex okay guess what 
KPHP does it for you. KPHP, out of that, will provide pagination for the list of any entity. How does it do it? And this is all automatically generated code, but I need you to understand it. Takes the timesheet controller and calls the paginate. It's a, it's a property. Okay? And what are you going to assign to the paginate? You're going to assign an array. In fact, the array is a very simple array because it's going to be two variables associated to a value. The first variable is the conditions. What is the value associated to the conditions? It's an array in its own. What is that array? It's going to say timesheet.employeeID. Remember that? That's the foreign key to employee, right? Yes. You want it equal to? What do you want it equal to? To the authenticated user. You got to see how everything is like encapsulated on its own class, on its own object? So, timesheet controller has the concept of the authenticate of, of the module authentication, right? And that guy has the concept of the user, which we know is employee, and it knows the ID. So basically what we're saying is the conditions to pagination are that the timesheet employee ID or that the employee ID in the timesheet should belong to the same one that is authenticated, to the ID of the person authenticated. What else? Well, I don't know if you guys remember, but when I display the timesheets, I display pending, submitted, approved, disapproved. In other words, pretty much all of them except the ones that were paid. Those are the ones that have a status code of C. So I said, okay, another condition, and you just add it to the array. Another condition is timesheet status code is not going to be equal to C. So let's backtrack for a second. How did I implement a timesheet list in PHP? I'm sorry? Yes. I had to manually open the connection to the database, create a query, select star from timesheet where timesheet, well, where employee ID equals, and then you will go into the session and grab the ID of whoever was in there and then put it in the in the in the query. Then execute the query, fetch the array. Now you have an array, right? And then you go through a for loop and you start displaying all this stuff. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And it's and it's so repetitive. And I do the same for employees. And I do the same for, for, for departments. And I do the... Hello? You get the point? What if we encapsulate all that code in a framework, Cake PHP, that will automatically do it for you. All you have to do is specify the conditions that you want, and better yet, it will provide you pagination. And then, what's the other pagination property? The limit the amount of list of, of timesheets that you're going to be providing in the list. I just pick 52. But you can put whatever you want. And then, what do you tell timesheet controller to do? I want you to set. Set is how you put a value into an attribute of a class. Set is how you assign a value of an attribute in a class.
So inside timesheet controller, I want you to set the variable timesheets. So I'm going to have a property timesheets, a property that I can actually get the value of or assign it. If I want to get the value, it's a get. If I want to assign the value to it, it's a set. Got it? That's what it's typically called in object-oriented uh, principles, the getters and setters, right? So you're going to set, inside timesheet controller, you're going to set to timesheets the property, what? This paginate, exactly, which is an array. Which is an array, right? The paginate of timesheet. And that's all. So, so can anybody tell me who is actually displaying my timesheets? Who? No. Timesheet, the model, knows how to grab this stuff from the database. Timesheet, the controller, knows how to list them and paginate them. Yes, the view. The view has ultimately the responsibility of taking that list and showing it to us. And there's a convention for that. If you go into the views, you will see that every single one of the models has a folder under views. So in this case, I'm trying to list what? Timesheets. So I should go into my view, timesheets folder. And I should see a view for every function that the timesheet list controller provides. The timesheet list controller provides an index, I should have an index view. The timesheet list controller provides an add, I should have an add view. And those views are plain, simple HTML. It's like pieces of HTML that do not care about logo, menus, left-hand side menus, footers, nothing. They only care about the actual content, the actual presentation of that function. So in this case, if you guys go to index, and CTP, by the way, is the extension for PHP for the view. My views into my timesheets, and I'm going to take a look at index CTP. Here it is. This is the view for Is that better? This is the view for list of timesheets. Okay? So notice that doesn't even start with HTML or header or anything. It's just a div. So you're concentrating on that section of your page. And it has its own class, timesheet index. So you can actually have the different styles and they're all going to be applied to the index of whatever entity you have. And you're going to display, remember that we display the, in an H1, we display the, the name of the page. I don't know if you guys remember, but I declare a variable which was the page title or whatever, and then the very first thing up there I would do in the page would be to assign a value to it, and that's what it's going to display as the title. Well, there's already there's already a title created for this page, and it has a convention. It's called timesheets list. No, this is going to echo in, in H1. Remember that I used to do that in... Where was it? In my Timex. If you guys take a look at timesheet list. Look. I used to have a page title. Right? And I just hard-cut it. 
time she lists into it and then where I would where would I display that right here h1 right <coughs> well that's already automatically created for you right remember we're looking at the actual generated code you guys don't have to write anything of this nature you know to be able to do it so what else did you what did, what else did you have to well you did you have to modify this one this is the sign out remember that in my timesheet list I should be able to sign out or log out so I created this anchor up there right now what happens if there's no timesheets whatsoever I ask if timesheets is empty what whose timesheets dollar sign timesheets dollar sign timesheets is the attribute that I set that was the last thing that I did in my index function is the attribute that I set with all those with the pagination of all those um, timesheets So the actual variable gets sent to the view. Suppose that it's empty. Where's the end of this if? Right here. So if timesheets, dollar sign timesheets is empty, what is it going to do? Nothing. It will just put a sign out anchor and that's it. Oh, and the title of the page. But if timesheets is not empty, then what are you going to do? Wow, this is pretty cool. Look at this. I'm going to display who is the employee that belongs to this list of timesheets. And how do I do that? How about if I pick the first timesheet in the array? Right? Oh, but wait a minute. Timesheets have a relationship with employees. And by the mere fact that timesheets have a relationship with an employee, that means that every timesheet will have a property of the employee that belongs to that timesheet. So all I have to do is say, from that first timesheet, I want you to get me the employee. And that's an object. And it's automatically generated for you. How? Well, because in the models, we created the associations. We said every timesheet will have an employee. And in the employee, we said every employee has many timesheets. And just by the mere fact of declaring those associations, that means you're going to be able to access every single one of those objects when you grab one of them. In fact, you know that there's a property in employee called name. And that's exactly what I'm interested in here. I'm interested in echoing from my first timesheet the employee name. That's it. All right. So now what? Well, now I am going to put the headers in my table because I'm about to do a table, right? A table of time uh, of timesheets. It's a list. Wow! Isn't this cool? Look at this. I decided that period ending date which is one of the fields that I display the status code or the ID can be sorted and the paginator will take care of that so the view 
has a paginator and you can tell the paginator to sort it by a certain field that's pretty cool isn't it and then you have your for each look at this the same for each where you're gonna go through each one of the elements of timesheets and you're gonna call each one a timesheet and what are you gonna do with each one of them what's the first thing that you display the period ending date right how do you do that you tell hey timesheet I want you to go into the property timesheet and get the period ending date but wait a minute I also want to provide a link remember I provided a link to the timesheet How was that done? I created an anchor, right? And then I'll say, okay, I want you to take me to, 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 what, what was the name of the, um, of the page that displays it? I want you to, and this is my for loop here, right? I want you to take me to print hours. I created an anchor. Say, I want you to take me to print hours and I'm passing as a parameter the timesheet ID right and then I display the period ending date that's gonna be my 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 what I show in that anchor so when I click on that period ending date I will be taken to that timesheet look how it's done here this is pretty cool you just say hey view call your HTML helper and I want to create a link and the first parameter of the link is going to be what you show in the link and the second part is where you are going to take me in that link can you tell me where is he, am I going to be taken to I'm supposed to be taken to print hours okay let's think about print hours print hours to me is the view of one timesheet who is supposed to take care of timesheets the timesheets controller so the link should take me to a controller what controller timesheets and it should actually execute an action in that controller. What's going to be the action? View. Better yet, you need a parameter because you are displaying in my anchor this and I'm telling you where to go. But that place needs a parameter and here comes the third and last parameter of link which is the actual the parameters that you're gonna pass can you tell me what is the parameter you're gonna pass is that particular timesheet that you're in the timesheet ID this is how we are going to be displaying our timesheet list Ah, very well. Yes, exactly. So we do not, we no longer say there's going to be an anchor from timesheet list into print hours. Timesheet list will have timesheet list.php and it will have an anchor that will take me to print hours.php. In fact, I'm going to show you my time ex executing in cake PHP and as soon as you look at the URL you have no idea that this website was built in PHP and I'm going to show you why I'm going to show you the execution of my Timex right now this is it 
Timex KPHP. Where is my home? Here it is. When I click to log in, where should I be taken to? Is it signing that PHP? No. What is it then? And I hope you guys, most of you guys, please watch the video lecture that I posted last week about MVC pattern. This is what MVC pattern is all about. You specify your host, your server, in our case, local host. Then the name of the app, Timex Cake PHP. Then the name of the controller. Who is the controller? Employees. Then the name of the action. What's the name of the action? Login. And if you need to pass parameters like we used to, in, then you do another slash and then you pass the name, of the value of the parameter. Cake PHP has what it's called a dispatcher. The dispatcher is the first guy that receives any request in the framework. And it actually takes the entire URL and breaks it down and says, oh, I know exactly what you're asking me for. And I know exactly who will be able to fulfill that request. And it goes, in, oh, timesheets. Here is timesheet controllers. Oh, login. Execute login. The controller then says, oh, I need to execute login. I know there is a timesheet. I know there is an authentication. I know that there is a paginator. All this stuff. And timesheet model will get me all the timesheets that I need under these conditions. And then it will know exactly what view to send it to. The index. Because that's what it's actually doing. So in the case of the login, the employee's login, In case of the employee's login, it's going to the employee's controller. What is it executing? It's executing login. Login. And then it's sending the result to view employee's login. This is it. Everything is done in cake, and now I'm going to show you how the error is handled. That's a really good question. Who do you think it should handle the error? The view, the controller, or the model? Okay. What would be a possible error in logging? Who will know whether it's an incorrect password or not? The view, the model, or the controller? And that's what you're going to start grasping as you understand more and more the MVC. The business rules, the actual meat of your system, should be encapsulated in the models. That's where all your validations, all your errors, everything should be in there. The rest of the stuff is just fulfilling services and do it in a specific in a specific presentation. That's it. Okay? So let's take a look at how login is done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you guys remember it's Mike Dover. One, two, three, four, five, six is the uh, password. Click. Whoa, look at this. Automatic pagination. Page one of one, showing six records out of total of six. And I'm going to add another one so you guys can see more. I can present them sorted by period and date. It 
it defaults to ascending as opposed to descending. I can present it by I can present it in, in order of status code or in order of timesheet ID. I didn't have to write one line of code to do this. And it's a lot more functionality than my PHP. And then I sign up. Where's my database? Here's my database. Timex Cake PHP. I'm going to assign all these to Mike. And then I'm going to notice how the Please notice how the URL changes. So I'm going to go to login. Ah, oh, man. Oh, because I set 52, right? Hello. So let me do a limit of 6. Where did I do that? Who who will be responsible for timesheet list? The controller. Why? Because remember, the controller is the one that provides you the services of the CRUDs. List is one of the services. It's the read one, right? It's the read. So the timesheet list controller has the index, which is what I use to display timesheet list. And I'm going to say the limit for that is going to be 6. Save it. And now I'm going to refresh this page. Notice now, automatically, there is a link for pagination. And I know it looks very ugh, awful, but we can, we can actually, in the view, change that. Here it is. Page, out of pages, showing records, uh, whatever. This is the actual stuff that shows and then here is the previews and the next the previews and the next there's a one and a two previews we should make a next Save it. Yeah, I'm putting the spaces, but it's not taking the... Say that again? Oh, okay. Like this? Word? Right. I was trying to make it to the actual arrows, but yeah. Because remember, in HTML, even though you will put a lot of spaces, you only get one space, right? Yeah. And actually, in the separator, we should do like like what, like a 
a paragraph. with new blank space eh, goes into the next save it hmm. and it's not taking it but anyway now you're having six shown and then the next two and that's all automatically generated by the framework Notice that we're displaying the name of the now is this an Ajax call? Right. When when you click on a in here and you see this spinning you know it's an entire post so you're like whoosh, bringing the whole thing all over again when you don't see anything refreshing in here silently puts the values that's an Ajax call so notice that index it's being called all the time right you just pass a parameter Now, when you do not specify an action, guess what it defaults to? Index. That's why I'm in timesheet list now. Why? Because I'm telling it timesheets, that's the name of the controller, timesheets, and I'm not saying slash index. I don't have to. Index is the default. But if I wanted to, I could have, I could have, index, and it brings me the same thing. Yes, very good. Not only it's determining what to query, depending on the URL and who is going to, um, be responsible for providing the, the the response it's also providing caching so if it sees that there's a request with the same URL it's not going to go all the way to the server again <coughs> and you can specify in the framework for how long the cache will be good for Yeah, same with the sorts. So now, do you guys remember the link that we created? Look at this. What I call my print hours that PHP. Guess what now it is? It's a call to, and I know it's really tiny down there, but I'm going to read it to you. It's a call to timesheets. Slash view. That means I'm, I want to see only one slash three in here slash four here slash five here slash seven click on it yeah I know I have to work on my view but this is it this is the plain vanilla timesheet view that gets automatically generated out of the database. Now, does it look like my print hours? No. Because you have to 
put style into it, you have to uh, rearrange them a little bit. And that's what you guys are going to do the last three or four weeks in your cake PHP. You're going to grab your plain vanilla cruds automatically generated out of the database and make it look like your style and rearrange the default plain vanilla views, creates, reads, updates and deletes to the one that you created first in HTML and then second in PHP. That's it. Yes, very good question. That's what it's called, templates. In fact, when you want to reverse engineer a database into a website, you can tell KPHP to use certain templates. But you have to tell it, you know, specifically what templates to use. Remember the templates that you guys picked at the beginning of the semester? Which has certain JavaScripts, had certain cascading style sheets, but the process is a little bit more complicated. So what you do is you tell CakePHP to reverse engineer your database, but do not generate the plain vanilla cruds. Use the following templates, and you have to specify specifically what styles in the template to use, and then it will backer engineer it and generate something close to this. Now, nobody has asked me then, how do we generate the menus? All the other stuff. Right now, we are concentrated on just the one piece of content that we want to show. But what about the rest? Who does that? on the left hand side no which one yes very good View, remember, is the folder that contains the views for all the entities, right? Departments, uh, employees. Well, it has a folder, special folder called the layouts. Okay? And the layouts will have an Ajax layout, an error layout, a flash. It will have a default layout. So I'm going to show you in color-coded one, because this is awful. the default layout. This is the default layout. This is the guy that has the HTML and the header and definitions or links to your styles and JavaScripts. Now, is it done in HTML? Of course not. It's going to be done in Cake PHP. So, you're going to have, hey, view, I want you to call the HTML helper and define a link to a CSS. What's going to be the name of the file? Default. It would automatically know where Cascading Style Sheets are supposed to be put by convention. It will automatically look for a default that CSS because that's how it is by convention. Also, HTML helper, grab a JavaScript file and it knows exactly where to find JavaScript files. Call jQuery min. And even though it's a PHP code, 
you guys already know what it's going to generate. It's going to generate all the links, the HTML links to our cascading style sheets and whatnot. Then what? Then the body. You guys remember the body? Had a huge div container, right? And then I had a header, and then I had a logo. You guys remember that? Timex, online timesheet system. This is all this stuff. You guys already built this. All you have to do is the shell around it, logo, menu, left hand side, footer, all the stuff, you put it in the layout. And the actual view becomes only that piece of information that you're trying to provide for a specific functionality. You guys remember this? JavaScript drop-down menu. It's still a UL. <coughs> now, can anybody tell me how the menus changed? Okay, I'm trying to log in. Are you going to send me to Timex? underscore kphp slash sign in that php no now we are in a new framework and the framework says you're supposed to send me to the name of the project timing underscore kphp slash the name of the controller that takes care of this new functionality employees slash the actual name of the action login and I will take care of sending you there What about registration? Registration is employees add. What about adding a new timesheet? A new timesheet becomes timesheets add. What about a list of timesheets, which we've already seen how it's implemented? It's timesheets index. And if you don't specify index, that's fine. Timesheets will default to the action index. This one is not implemented, as you guys can see. <laughs> Who will be in charge of pay timesheets? Same guy, timesheets, right? But you will go to, instead of index, you will go to, like, pay timesheets, or whatever you want to call it. What about approved timesheets? You will also go to timesheets controller and you will have an action called approve or whatever. So some of these are not implemented yet. So for the final project, the final KHPHP project, obviously I'm not going to ask you guys to implement all 10 functional requirements. That's a lot of work even though most of the website has is going to be automatically generated by KPHP. But I need you to implement logging and timesheet list. Oh, and registration. Logging, timesheet list, and registration. Those three. That's it. And I will upload my Timex KPHP so you guys can look at it and play with it. Obviously the KPHP um, content I still have to give it to you. And we're going to go through each one of the three functional requirements step by step on how I implement it. And in fact we also have to go through the automatic generation of the of the website from, from the website uh, from the database. That's the video lecture that I'm going to be posting next week. How to automatically create a website that will do the CRUDs for
for you on each one of your entities all driven from the database. I erase what? One model. Time sheet. Oh, you want to simulate a syntax error in one of these. Well, first of all, when you do it in, in, in Eclipse, it will tell you, right? Oops. Well, yeah. I wonder why it didn't show a red thing. Usually, use a... Uh, showing it on the right-hand side. Syntax error unexpected in the file. Wow. But what happens when you execute it, right? Wow. It tells you what the error is, it tells you what file it is, and it tells you what line. Now, does this have anything to do with it? Cake PHP, right? We'll see. You were right. Cake PHP is giving you all this. Now, suppose that you do not want to show a programmatic error message. Even though it's very useful from the development perspective, from, from the user perspective, it's not very useful. Not user friendly at least. Then what you would do is you would create a fatal error.ctp. That's the view for a fatal error. And you could provide something like, sorry, there's a problem with the system, whatever. They don't need to know that there is an error in line 58 of timesheet.php. So that's what it's going to show. A sorry. Nice user-friendly error message. And yeah, that's another one of the views that is under errors folder. And you can generate the fatal error. Remember the 404? You don't want your browser, you don't want your web server to just send a 404. You just want to send a nice page that says, our website is down right now, or whatever. That's what you would put. So I'm going to publish another video lecture this weekend that will cover a little bit about the object-oriented PHP. And I need you guys to, even though we just very informally cover it, I want you guys to understand it very well. What is a class? What is a function inside a class? What is a getter and setter? How do you address each one of those. How do you declare them? How do you make a new instance of each one of those? Okay? All using PHP syntax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you a video lecture with how I converted my PHP Timex into an object-oriented Timex. 
That's using classes. Not using CakePHP. Using classes. So I'm going to have s something similar to a, an employee class in a timesheet class. Not as complicated. Okay? But I'm going to still have, you know, a timesheet list PHP and a sign in that PHP. You know, I'm still going to have that. But I'm going to have my code object oriented, which means that all that code that you put in a PHP file that included connecting to the database, creating the query, um, getting the the array of results, display all that stuff is going to be isolated because the connection of the database and getting the list of timesheets should be a concern of the timesheet class. So in the actual PHP page, I'm going to use that guy and call that guy and will not have any code relative to connecting a database, creating the, the SQL, whatever. I'm just going to call that guy, get the results, and present them. That's the object-oriented way. Now, I could ask you to rebuild your database the object-oriented way. That would be a lot of work. But I need you to have the concept of the object-oriented because Cake PHP is object-oriented. And then the next week, I'm going to be posting or publishing a, a video lecture where I will go step by step on how to make the website, the CRUDs of all my entities in a website, driven out of the database.